The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. On this episode of Life Today. That's really what we're doing here. We're raising alarm bells about that public school that you thought was good. I was a public school kid. My dad was a public school teacher. It's not the same public school and you can't afford to resign yourself to it. Pete Hegseth is waging a battle for the American mind. They're trying to wipe out, wipe God out of the education. Our children are going to literally miss the blessings that freedom offers. Next. It is a joy for us to come into your home. I'm James, this is Betty. Next year, married 60 years, I love it. And uh, I think you do most of the yeah, time, right? I most do, of the time. I do. <laughs> I, uh, we count it an honor to come into your home. We wish we were sitting right there with you. I want you to know that this book I'm holding here is uh, what Betty put in our hands and in our home. Pete Hegseth wrote the book along with uh, Dr. David Goodwin who really talks about classical education according to God and our founders. But Pete got a real burden. His life was changed by God for what was happening in our schools to take everything pertaining to God out. Why did you get so interested in this book that you devoured it, you marked it all up, you uh, were anxious to talk to Pete. What? Why did you get so interested in this? Well, you know, James, for the very reason you just said, the Christianity has been taken out of our education, you know, and I, I want our great-grandchildren to know that the foundation with education was, when we were going to school, was Christianity. And we used to have prayer in the school. We used to, to have a, a scripture read over the loudspeaker. All of that is gone. And the foundations of what God, how, how God was in our lives, it was a big part of it. And you don't hear, see a, hear or see a trace of that anymore. Well, as a result of it, the uh, liar, the deceiver, Satan himself, who wants to take over this world by taking over individual lives, has taken over the American mind. And Pete just did a fabulous job. I want you to listen to an interview we did with him. We aired this on the stream, stream.org. You, you ought to go to the stream every day. But listen to Pete and listen to Betty and me talking to him right here because I promise you this is going to bless you. The battle for the American mind. We are losing our schools. Yes. We can get them back. Here we are talking to Pete. Well, Pete, I'm James, and Betty, my wife of 60 years next year is by me. We have 25 grandchildren. Can you imagine that? Wow. <laughs> and uh, I you. want you to know uh, that we just think the world of you. Uh, we think that you are an amazing communicator, we feel like we've watched you grow in your life. I would, I would have to use the term spiritually, <laughs> even in the last few years that you've not only become concerned and thank you for your military service, mm -hmm. thank you for the way you support the military mm -hmm. as courageously and with as much conviction as anyone on the planet. And I, I'm gonna have to go ahead and say this, uh, you and Will and Rachel on the weekend on uh, Fox and Friends, you should be on five days and they should take the weekend shift. You all are simply the best. I'm, they're my friends, we, we, we join them every, every day, but you guys are absolutely yeah, really fabulous. Are you enjoying that weekend beat? Do you like it? Oh my goodness. I, I've, uh, they're, they're an absolute delight to, uh, to host with. Will and Rachel are the best. Uh, I hope it comes across on TV. We're genuine friends, yes. have been for many years. And you know what it is also, it all centers around the, the faith and the principles that we all share and hold. And, and um, so to have an opportunity to call that a job, which is, <laughs> you know, it's not work to work with them. And, uh, and just to have the ability to, to fight the good fight of the information war which is, which well, it is comes what we're across, all involved in right now. It comes across that you all not only like each other, you actually love each other. And that that love yes. is very genuine. But here's the thing that comes from all three of you. You love all of us. You love every American. You love freedom. You want it for every American because you care about every American. And you realize that freedom is threatened. And when you took it on in this uh, battle for the American mind and you took on the education system, 
Now, let me just tell you what I've watched, Pete, in the last couple of years, probably since you met uh, uh, David. Uh, he's really put some great deposits in your life. And I would say oh. you've had some pretty deep changes in your life spiritually where you could look back and say, you know, there were some times I didn't walk exactly as I should. And all of a sudden I'm seeing it just, let's say in a magnified fashion, the importance of God. And you talk so openly about Jesus and a relationship with him unapologetically and how that was what made us great when we were birthed by founders who believe that. Mm -hmm. And so am I right about that? I'm watching changes Amen. in Amen. Pete. Amen. I'm so grateful for David Goodwin and for the good Lord putting him in my life. Uh, what an amazing human being. This book does not happen without him. Uh, I, it's hard to overstate what an influence he has had on me. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, sometimes it takes uh, winding around <clears throat> in your own life in a wide, you know, winding path uh, to realize how fallen and broken you really are and in need of a savior. And, and then, and then it gets really urgent how much you want that in your kids, how, you know, the found, my parents were wonderful. They gave me every opportunity in the world. And, and, and so I can't complain about that. They taught me about the Lord, but I made my own decisions for a, a, a long time in a lot of different ways. When you come to realize that you can give that understanding to your kids at an earlier age and maybe save them a decade and a half, <laughs> uh, so that they're, they're prepared to enter the cultural warfare that is our world today. Um, without hoping they eventually find find their path and, and, and a genuine relationship with Jesus Christ. And so I'm between David Goodwin, my pastor, Chris Durkin, who's featured in the book, my, my wife, Jenny. Um, it, I'm just so grateful to God to uh, be a very small part of the fight for his kingdom. And I, we write at the top of this book, you know, this ambitious project is an approach with humility and a full reckoning of, of human nature. It is my brokenness that brings me to this book. Uh, and, wow. and that's exactly right. And I just want, I want my kids and eventually grandkids um, to have a country worth fighting for and to know their Lord and Savior. And it, it does get ur more urgent with time. I can only imagine with grandkids, you know, and, <laughs> and so that I'm hoping this is a gift for them. Well, Pete, your heart is what drew me to your book, too, and I have hardly been able to put it down. I'm, I've read most of it, and I've marked it up like crazy, but it just <laughs> blessed my heart because I'm, I'm a mother, I'm a grandmother, and now a great-grandmother, and I care about our children's futures and what they're going to grow up, the foundation that they're going to have, and your book just so well explains the history of Christianity and education and how they were together, but they've been pulled yes. apart because of what we're facing and the things we're going through today. It, they're trying to wipe out, wipe God out of the education. And that is the foundation of where we learn. How are kids going to learn if they don't know the history? And that, they're Amen. trying to w wipe the slate clean, whereas they, like you said, indoctrinating them instead of educating them. And so your book has really been a blessing to me, and I encourage anyone that hears about it to pick it up and get it and read it. Well, Betty, thank you very much. You're exactly right. Not only has God gone from the classroom, it's openly hostile yeah. to, to any ideas of faith whatsoever, condescending to it. Yeah. And if you look at the people that originally pulled God out, they were atheists. This was mm -hmm. not an accidental thing. They knew for their utopian humanistic schemes to work, they had to pull God out. And they wrote openly about it yeah. 100 years ago. And they did it subtly. And you've read it. I mean, they did it subtly by first we're going to pull out do a pullout period off of off of campus grounds so the parents would sort of you wouldn't notice fully that it's missing and and frankly then the church did its part yeah. too abdicating its responsibility on education and said well we're just going to do sunday school well yeah. One hour on Sunday is not going to replace 40 hours during the week. And we, we got rid of that vocational part of what, what churches had done. So sometimes it, it it's scary. It's scarier when you realize the at the baseline what they actually did. Uh, it's not a bunch of schemes and it, it's get God out. You have to get the anchor of truth, of biblical truth out of the classroom. The immovable object has to go. And all the way down to the Pledge of Allegiance, which did not say under God originally, was meant to create an allegiance to the state. They took the cross away from the front of the classroom and put up a flag. And we love the flag. I love America. Um, but that was their original intention. That's why they're happy to throw the flag out now, because it was never about the flag. It was always a placeholder for something else for them. So it... That I mean, the Bible was in every classroom a hundred years ago in this country. It's how you it's it, it's the waters in which we swam. It was the foundation of how we were educated. And now kids don't know 
um, Matthew from Mark and Luke and from John. And well, that's going to have yeah. consequences. I was a senior in high school when they announced over the speaker in my homeroom class that they were taking prayer out of the school. And wow. I was shocked. I could not believe it. And that was just, they'd already been doing a lot of negative stuff about it, like you said, way before that. But that was a key step that really changed what started in the change of our country and what we believe. Absolutely right. They the Warren out, Court. They, they ripped out more of sure. the morning devotional that we would have in the prayer. They were on their way to ripping God out. And when you talk about the battle for the American mind, uprooting a century of miseducation, <clears throat> they have actually removed the very concept of creator, God, the faith of our founders, the answered prayer that led to that founding, the great distinctive diversity, difference, and even disagreement on the part of the founders and their ability to defend their particular positions. Somehow this was all laid down for the benefit of others and the sake of freedom and the birth of the greatest nation in history. Not one of the greatest, the greatest. Many people have said second only to the birth of Jesus was the birth of this nation. I personally don't think that's an exaggeration. The birth of this nation was a supernatural miracle where great minds came together and became supernaturally united like Jesus prayed they could. And Pete, it can happen today. If we would come to the table of reason, we don't have a single challenge that people seeking the wisdom that's freely offered that comes from above could not solve, right? And we don't have one. We just need to come to the table of reason. Frankly, I think you and David, and I believe your weekend program, and even Fox and Friends, and Fox, thank God for them, and all the other conservative uh, outreaches, because there are not many comparatively, but I really believe that you're helping inspire what I call the next necessary great awakening, and it'll be the greatest in history. So we were birthed because of that. We can have a rebirth of freedom. We can save the future of freedom. That happened under Reagan with General Daniel Graham, and I was a part of that. I'm told that I was the person that got him, Reagan, to even run, and I know I brought Daniel Graham into his life, who actually hmm. led the military and knew what the Soviet Union was doing, and he helped tear it down. And we can mm. see that same great move to save the future of freedom. That's what this book is about. Betty is reading the book to me, and she doesn't really like to read. I mean, I don't have to read it. She's reading it. She's highlighting it. She's making sure I don't miss it. And I hope everybody watching us right now will get the battle for the American mind. Because I'm telling you, Pete, if, if millions of people will read this and begin to fight for the American mind like you inspire us to, we can see the future of freedom extended. We could even see it saved. If we don't have this, I think our children are going to literally miss the blessings that freedom offers and has offered all amen, of us. Amen, amen. What an uplifting message. You are precisely correct, right? Every kid today deserves the exact type of education that our founders got that led to that yes. providential brilliance of 1776. That was Latin. That was Greek. That was great books. That was what, uh, biblical uh, history. It was human history. They understood human nature. They understood our impulses, our fallen nature, and as a result, knew, knew how to architect a form of governance never seen successfully done on uh, on earth and we're benefiting from that today and they if they made one mistake they were it was that they assumed it, it would perpetuate itself in the classroom and it's our job to revive that type of teaching so that we can revive a generation of young kids that are not just survivors of public school it, we need salt and light i'm an advocate of salt and light in institutions but when it's totally gone and it's poisoning the minds of our kids it's time to pull them out seek out an alternative to fortify them, put, to put on the, uh, the armor of God, to go out into this culture and be the type of generation we had in 1776 that would be a rebirth of freedom. You are, you're exactly right. It's not an accident. We can't, it, America does not perpetuate itself. It starts with in the home with parents. Yeah. It then goes to the church in, in, in what we teach our kids and the community they're involved in. And then after that, for 40 hours a week, it's what we want pumped into their minds. <laughs> and the left has been immensely successful in controlling every lever of that pipeline. And that's why we aggressively, David and I, call for pulling your kids out of government schools if you can. And there's other things you can do. I get some people cannot. I get it. 
but pulling your kids out if you can and putting them in a classical Christian school or a school you know is rejecting the progressive pipeline of education so that they can be prepared to think critically, to have a liberated mind. That's what the liberal arts actually meant. We used to teach the liberal arts. We don't teach them anymore in schools. Uh, that kind of renaissance is needed today. And I'm just, I'm grateful for folks like you, for Fox and elsewhere that are, that are talking about it because awareness is a word of the left. I remember hearing it at college campuses all the time. We need to raise awareness. That's really what we're doing here. We're raising alarm bells about that public school that you thought was good. I was a public school kid. My dad was a public school teacher. It's not the same public school and you can't afford to resign yourself to it. I think folks are waking up to that. Thank goodness. Let me just say thank you, Lord, for the zeal that we hear in Pete's voice. Thank you for what you put on Betty's heart. In Jesus' name, now, now listen to me. You can now, with the Supreme Court decisions either side of Roe, the one before and the one after the Roe decision, gave us back, as Kelly Shackelford taught right here on Life Today and on the stream, stream.org. That's where you ought to go for, for the news every day. The smartest people who love God are pouring it out with truth and principles. But Kelly said that those two decisions by the Supreme Court gave us, Betty, the ability as American parents and grandparents and great-grandparents to take back our schools. And, and you're already seeing people so upset. Betty, the reason prayer was removed from the school was we didn't take it as serious as we should in the home. And the reason God has been left out of our schools is we didn't think it was important to keep the principles. We're not talking about teaching your particular denominational or sectarian view at, at, at school and having like a, a preaching session at school. That's not what we're talking about. But we're talking about leaving godly influence in the school, which is where a teacher could express concern for a child. You see, a co we, one of the Supreme Court decisions had to do with a coach praying on the football field after a game. I mean, the man lost his job. We've had people fired because they talk about God, but you can talk about the devil, transgenderism, all of this extreme stuff, and even teach it in the schools. Well, see, we have allowed that to happen. Because we didn't take prayer serious at home, it was removed from the schools. Because we haven't taken God's principles as serious as we should at home and held up those principles that make marriages work. See, today, marriage doesn't matter. You just have sex and you have babies, and if you don't want the babies, you kill them because you're putting God out, God's principles out, God's truth out. When you leave that out of your marriage, your marriage deteriorates, your relation deteriorates, your business deteriorates, your nation deteriorates, your school deteriorates. Everything that matters to the one who knows what matters begins to be diminished, and you can't do that. And now then, Betty, we have actually, and this is a miracle, Pete. Listen, I'm for the private schools, and the classical schools are great, and the principal approach are good. All of the, uh, back, all the different ones that are there for homeschooling, all these different great things. But we could take our public schools back. It's our money that funds them. Yeah. Betty, we want our great-grandchildren to have the best possible education in the public schools. Yeah. Not everybody can homeschool. Not everybody can go to a private school, let's say. Now then we're getting the credit where you can as far as the money part goes. But the point is we could take back our public schools. I don't think most public school teachers like what's going on in the schools. So I think if we would come together and people are beginning to go back to the school board meetings, mm -hmm. they're beginning to say you're not going to control what we think our kids think you're going to give them an education, not an education according to all the horrible ideologies that you have and the positions you have that are totally anti-biblical, anti-moral, anti-truth, anti-God. Pete, thank you. Get the book. Get it. In the bookstores, it's going to bless you. Father, thank you so much for what you're doing to wake us up. And God, we can see the greatest awakening in the history of the world. In Jesus' name. By the way, it all starts with us. And it all starts with us revealing the love of God, the life of God, extending the hands of God. Betty, our viewers have sent us and missionaries all over the world. And you know the things that our viewers notice? They noticed, for instance, in the feeding programs, the little children burning their hands because they had a tin can to get the soup. They wanted to give them heat-resistant bowls. They did it. You know what else they saw? 
they've seen little children with hurt feet, with no shoes. And we had one of our viewers come and say, I can get some shoes that are great, real inexpensively. Could we give away shoes? Well, we started giving away shoes and smiles. I want you to just look in on a scene that's gonna capture your heart. And then you're gonna express the heart of God by extending his hands. You watch. In this season of giving, God's word has very special meaning when he tells us not to be only hearers of the word, but also doers of the word. It's a great day when you can give until the least of these. I've hung out in this village all afternoon and I could not wait for this moment to be honest with you, but I've had a chance to play with the children. We've hung out and I've played at their playground with them. You would not imagine what playground they play on. Many of them have never had a pair of shoes until this moment. And I promise you now they will not be playing in dangerous places again without shoes to protect their feet. You shouldn't have to walk around without shoes on your feet. You shouldn't have to do that. You should be able to play and not ever have to worry about cutting your feet. I'm so thankful to Life Outreach. In this moment, this is what it all comes down to. Something so special and so simple. Changing his little life forever. Thank you so much for making it possible for these children and hundreds of thousands of children across the world. Thank you so much. I just let Tabby, you've gone all over the world with us and seeing you those shoes, I'm holding this little, little shoe right here that we send for any gift that you will give to help us give those shoes. You think you can give 10 pair for $36. And uh, you know, you can, you can just give 50 pair of shoes for $180. I wish you'd do that. We are sending, if you give over $100, and I'd love you to give that 180, we're sending the little box of shoes with this shoe. And you know, Betty, we've, we've loaded our Christmas tree. Betty's even got a little yeah, tree. Tree of its own it's just, for my just, shoes. Just for the little, the little shoes. And I, I really want you to, uh, to get these. Uh, let, me, let me just say this to you as personally as I can. You have helped us bless so many people's lives. Do you know what we're doing along with the shoes? And boy, do our viewers love this. We're giving little children a smile who never had one. Did you know that we've actually seen children when they see their face in a reflection, like sometimes in the, in the side of, the, of a vehicle that where they can see the reflection in the, in the window and looking in because it's dark on the inside and they get a reflection and they pull back because they see their little face. Some of them have never seen clear mirrors. And sometimes we've played back video footage on a monitor and we saw one little boy see his face and he just pulled back. He couldn't stand the way he looked. That makes me so sad. We've got doctors who will go to the mission field and for an average of $500, we can give them a smile. And that's a very expensive surgery, but you could pay for it. You know, think about it, $1,000, two children, smiles. And many of you are able to do that. Betty, our viewers, who are blessed by God. Many of them are, are older people like us who may have some reserves that they can go into. That, that's how we get so many shoes. We just don't stop giving. And we, we give water wells every time we say, now well. It's because we said, God, let us do it. And if you're able to do it, you'll do it. Could you give smiles? Would you give shoes? Could you give the 180? Could you give the 36? Please, we're going to send you these gifts and the gifts that we offer to bless you. But you really are giving the greatest gift. You're sharing the love of God. Thank you so much. Go online right now or dial that number. Take your bank card and use it like a check. Please do that. If you write a check, make it to life. But call us. Let us know today what you're sending. We need to hear from you. 
Thank you so much. Poverty is a killer, and because of it, children needlessly suffer, not only from a lack of food and clean water, but also from a lack of things we often take for granted, like a simple pair of shoes. Far too many children living in extreme poverty have never owned a new pair of shoes. And while that may seem minor in light of all their needs, walking with bare feet puts them at risk of life-threatening infections and disease that could lead to crippling consequences and even death. By responding today, you will help secure and make ready 150,000 pairs of Christmas shoes to be shipped and delivered to children around the world just in time for the holidays. Your gift of $36 will help provide 10 pairs of shoes. A gift of $72 will help provide 20 pairs. And a gift of $180 will help provide 50 pairs of Christmas shoes for children in need. As a thank you for your gift of support, be sure to request this beautifully crafted red crystal shoe ornament, a treasure to display at each Christmas. With your gift of $100 or more, you may request this keepsake boxed set featuring four of life's crystal Christmas shoe ornaments. Finally, please consider a gift of $1,000 or more to help provide over 275 pairs of shoes or two children with corrective cleft lip or palate surgeries, and you may request the beautiful bronze sculpture, Let the Children Come. Please call, write, or make your gift online today. You know, Betty, I had the Rwandan orphans crawl up in my lap a little bit like this, and, and it became my favorite picture. Thank you for letting children get in your arms. We are sending this for gifts of over $1,000. I know there's some of you can do more than that even, but you're putting Jesus' arms around the children. Yes, even when you give them shoes or smiles. Thank you so much for doing it. We love you. By the way, get uh, Pete's book, uh, The Battle for the American Mind. It's great because we're in a battle and we're gonna win. To God be the glory. Thanks for watching. The only way to turn back that tide is to go on the offensive. The battle for the American mind continues tomorrow. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.